it's my privilege to uh, to get to introduce our um, uh, this year's recipient of the uh, OIS Lifetime Innovator Award, uh, dear friend, um, Dr. Roger Steiner. Roger has had a, an impactful uh, career. Um, he's currently uh, professor of ophthalmology, uh, chairman of the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute at the University of California, Irvine, uh, which means he's a neighbor. And that's been even more special for Marsha and I and many of your other friends in Southern California to have you uh, bless us with, uh, with you and April coming to, to California in the past. Roger's been an innovator. Um, in our field from the beginning, uh, so from the time that he was trained um, to cut on the cornea uh, back at Harvard. And uh, let's hear what a few people have to say about Roger. I first met Roger 30 or 35 years ago when Irv Leopold was the medical director at Allergan and I asked Irv to try and put together a group of a half a dozen of the leaders of the future and uh, Roger was one of those that, that he picked and so we interfaced uh, in, in that uh, advisory role for a number of years and um, I was certainly delighted when Jim Mazel convinced him to come to UCI. Okay, I've had the opportunity to know Roger Steiner for over 15 years. I've known him both personally and professionally. And when we met when he was in Boston, and I was actively trying to recruit him to come here to the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute and be the head of our new center in Irvine. Uh, Roger and I have uh, really had parallel careers. We both uh, trained uh, in uh, cornea. Uh, doing fellowships, and then we both uh, assumed responsibilities for academic programs. I took over the cornea service at the University of Minnesota, and uh, Roger Steiner took over the cornea service at uh, Mass Eye and Ear in the Harvard-affiliated program, and almost uh, at exactly the same time. So we assumed similar responsibilities and uh, started to train our own fellows and to train residents and to do research, and uh, kind of ran side by side, if you will, for our whole career. My introduction to Roger Steinart really goes back to my first introduction to ophthalmology in the mid-1980s. I still had red hair, and Roger had hair. That's how long ago it was. The first time I met Roger was when I joined Verizon Optics as the, uh, the CEO, and Roger was the medical director at the time. And um, that was in the spring of 2011. Uh, he took me on a tour of the uh, facility, his facility at, at the University of Irvine, and actually he uh, pointed off in the distance to uh, a big dirt patch where he, uh, he uh, shared with me that that was going to be the state-of-the-art uh, Gavin Herbert Eye Center. And uh, it was a little bit hard to uh, understand at that point, but uh, several years later, obviously, it's turned out to be a, a spectacular uh, facility. I think Rogers, um leadership and tenacity uh, as part of the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute project is, has been certainly well documented. Uh, but it's that kind of focus, that kind of uh, tenacity, uh, but coupled with his humility and gracefulness, I think is what separates Roger from a lot of his colleagues. Roger is an extraordinary ophthalmologist, not a great ophthalmologist, he's beyond that. And what makes Roger special is that he has all the tools He's a five-tool ophthalmologist. He can do cataract, cornea refractive, ocular surface, infectious disease, and be equally facile in every aspect of ophthalmology. Well, I think certainly he's uh, among the top dozen or so leaders in, in ophthalmic surgery. I think that's pretty well recognized, and uh, he's, he's come up with some amazing ideas. Well, you know, one of the things that has always impressed me uh, about Roger is he sees problems and tries to solve them. And so it's not, oh gosh, that's an issue that, that we have to avoid or go another direction. Let's solve that problem. And that, I think, is fundamental in innovating. And so he, he got very comfortable with technology early. He got comfortable candidly in working with industry. 
and we teamed up, not just Roger and I, of course, but he teamed up with many other uh, colleagues in, in industry and brought new technology to solve real problems that he uh, and his colleagues had identified. But I think through the years, Roger's always been at the forefront of, of uh, leading edge technology, both from a cataract as well as a refractive point of view. Well, he's our leader, <laughs> he's our champion. It wouldn't have happened without Roger. <laughs> you know, if you think about Roger Steinert on innovation, you would think immediately to the leader uh, the visionary around corneal transplants. But it goes way beyond that. Roger has been a leader in new innovations. I had the luxury of working with Roger also at AMO. When I was running AMO, he was our medical monitor there. And he was constantly in our offices talking about what we need tomorrow. So not only is he a leader because of this corneal transplant, but he has created categories because of his ability to know not what we need today, but what's gonna be required tomorrow. Well, the earliest research that I remember uh, Roger doing that uh, impressed me was his work uh, in the laser field. And I think many people know that he's been involved in uh, eczema laser research and that he's been involved in femtosecond laser research, but he also was involved in a lot of good research early on on Yeg lasers when we started to first incorporate those into our practice. And so along with his good friend Carmen Pugliafito, they did some of the best research in the early days on the Yeg laser as well. So he's had a, a lifelong interest in the application of lasers to the anterior segment. Uh, and it really began for most of us with the, uh, with the Yeg laser and its applications in cataract surgery. Uh, it's really an incredible uh, contribution that he's made and continues to make uh, in ophthalmology. And again, it's based uh, really on his broad, deep, clinical experience and knowledge, but also on his ability to just think incredibly logically on, uh, on a problem and on what would deliver a clinical solution. And that's uh, just a, a, such a valuable asset, not only to ophthalmology practice, but also to the ophthalmic industry. It's a unique skill set to be able to be so good at what you do, but be able to translate that. Roger has that unique set. A lot of people are great surgeons, but they're not able to translate that surgical skill set. Roger Steiner has that ability. And since the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute is a teaching institution, we needed somebody not only to be a skilled surgeon, but to be able to translate to that to the fine young men and women at the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute. I do like to take credit for picking good people. <laughs> What makes Roger really special is that he only sees the upside in every opportunity and he takes life a day at a time and he does it with passion and he does it with purpose. Uh, Roger is just an extraordinary person and he's the kind of person that we can all admire at almost every different level. He's a hardworking and dedicated guy and he's so straightforward and so engaged and engaging that, you know, even uh, more recently as he's faced some health challenges, uh, some of us might have uh, stepped back and been less active uh, and maybe uh, less willing to, to be uh, directly engaged, not Roger. Yeah, I think probably uh, many people would have folded their tent given the circumstances, but not Roger. We've been a few places together uh, with our residents and fellows where they've gotten into interesting competitions in Las Vegas, for example. I don't know if I want to discuss those in detail, but he'll, he'll remember some of them. I've seen him in a lot of fun situations. There's nothing better than a Roger Steiner with a big smile, a cigar, and a single malt scotch because that's when he's happiest, especially talking about his Red Sox. I've seen him at baseball games when the Red Sox are losing, when they're winning, and he's screaming just like everybody else. But I still think of Roger Steinert in that smile. That's that contagious smile he has, no matter what environment, no matter what situation. And we all know he's gone through trials and tribulations, especially over the last couple of years. He's never, ever lost that desire, that passion, and that big Roger Steinert smile. Uh, I'm sure even receiving uh, this Lifetime Innovation Award uh, is going to be one that he shuns and, and says, you know, I don't really deserve this. But uh, that's the kind of person Roger Steiner is, and, and uh, he's certainly very deserving of this type of acknowledgement. 
you are clearly are an innovator, someone that uh, I've been proud to know, someone whose work uh, I have appreciated and found useful in my, my own learnings. Uh, but uh, more than that, you've been a lifelong friend and a very special friend uh, and a resilient friend, uh, and I couldn't be more proud uh, to call you my friend and to be here today congratulating you on this great honor. Roger, congratulations on receiving the OIS Innovator Award, so richly deserved. Roger, in conclusion, congratulations on receiving your OIS Lifetime Innovator Award, and I have one last thing for you. Ready? Go Sox, Boston Strong. Again, congratulations, Roger. No one deserves it more on winning the OIS Lifetime Innovator Award. Congratulations, Roger, on, on receiving this award. I, I certainly wish I was there to uh, share it with you and maybe even wander down on Bourbon Street with you to have one of those famous drinks. Look forward to seeing you soon, Roger. Roger, congratulations on receiving the OIS Lifetime Innovator Award. You are so deserving. I don't think of you just as an innovator. I think of you as an architect. You are an architect that have built the ophthalmology world. Congratulations, Roger, and congratulations, April. You've been an unbelievable source behind Roger. Well, Roger, let me uh, add my congratulations to all those on film and all of the people who are in this room. There certainly is uh, no one who deserves this uh, more. And it's really a, quite an honor when Bill called me, he said, you know, we're going to do this for Roger and uh, we need somebody to uh, interview him. Would you be willing to do that? And so obviously I jumped at that opportunity. But, you know, having never interviewed anybody before, I sort of had to go back and sort of look at some of the great interviewers of our time, the Tom Brokaws and Walter Cronkites and so on. And so the, the first person that sort of came to mind as I looked back at who I should try and emulate in terms of the kinds of questions to ask was, of course, uh, Barbara Walters. <laughs> and so the, the, so the first question uh, that I'll start with uh, is, a, is a real Barbara Walters uh, type question. We've heard about all of the great uh, technology uh, today in the morning. And so if um, the question that I have is, um, if you could be any surgical technology, what would you be? <laughs> um, first of all, question uh, before I start, that uh, a year ago, I was barely speaking. Uh, I was three months after two surgeries, and it was, uh, but I was convinced that I would still make uh, AS arrest, and, and uh, uh, it was pretty, Painful for the audience, I think. For other, but uh, uh, but I've I've gotten a lot of the well since then. Uh, I still am working hard at this, and it'll never be 100%. The good news is that uh, I my brain works as far as uh, processing information, just not for say, saying it as well as I used to. Uh, but as if, if I appreciate everybody uh, allowing me to do this. Um, so, as far as my, uh, my uh, uh, 
most important uh, uh, thing. Uh, I think of all the instruments, uh, it's the one that is the most important because it is elegant and it's uh, classic. It is, uh, and all, all, all uh, in instruments, uh, sets, and used in virtually every surgery, uh, nor, uh, f from the anterior to the posterior. And that is the Sinsky hook. Because you think about it, it's the one that is in everybody's uh, tube toolbox and uh, and and you know and uh, it's especially m meaningful for, for me because I got to know pretty well uh, Bob's uh, last couple of years uh, and the, his last major contribution uh, and um, and I helped give him some of the tools that he needed to make this uh, be real. And he was um, passionate for uh, kid, kids getting uh, better. And so, and that, and it, it, believe it or not, that, that came to ha happen just before he, d he died. So it was very, very important to him, but I think to all of us and the kids going forward. Okay. Well, you've, you've, you know, I'm going to ask you to put your humility aside here because you've been involved in so many wonderful tools and technologies that have really helped all of our patients. And so I'd be interested in knowing, as I think the audience would, what do you feel are some of the, the most significant accomplishments that you've had that have had an impact on, on patient care? Well, I'm not the person to do that, I don't think. <laughs> but uh, I, I'd simply say that uh, lasers have always been at the near or at the front forefront of what I do. And uh, I'm very grateful for the, the, the opportunity that came along at just the right time, because that's really when uh, I was uh, just be beginning, uh, and it, the, it, the, this idea of a YAG laser con conquered the world, and 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 that um, so Carmen and I, I, and I decided to try to understand what was really going on, because guess what? Nobody really told anybody what was going on, and so we went over to. Harvard, but they kicked us out, and, uh, and instead we went over to MIT, and we started doing our research on that to understand what actually is going on, and that, in the long run, ended up uh, uh, making the um, Exmer and and the Femto and all those other things, and you know there are many things you could talk about, and uh, and uh, but I guess that would be the one thing. That Great, great. I think Bill talked a little bit on the, on the video, and, and, and I'd like to sort of visit the whole idea of relationships. I think Bill talked about the, the fact that, uh, you know, innovators have relationships with industry, and that's really what brings, it, brings these things to the forefront. And so I know that there are key people in your life who, within industry that have had a, a tremendous influence on you, and people not involved in uh, industry necessarily that have had a... Uh, a true uh, influence on you. Maybe you could just touch a little bit upon some of the key people in your life that uh, that have helped you, uh, you know, along the way, and that uh, you have uh, maintained uh, great relationships with. Uh, you know, it's it's endless, and I, it, there's no way that I could uh, announce uh, everybody. Or uh, so, please uh, understand that. You know, but I, if we're going to say key people in, uh, first of all, uh, my three most uh, trusted and, and affording uh, people, uh, 
Klaus Dohmann was uh, the, my chair, and uh, and uh, Art Borkoff, who wor worked with him, and the two of them were great uh, collaborators. One in uh, one in academics and one in uh, private practice, and then the, the third that is was Art. Dr. Grant, Mark Grant, who is uh, actually honored uh, in, uh, in his, 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 um, uh, his uh, la, la, well, I don't know what to say, but uh, past uh, uh, person who, who is now honored finally in, as one of the key people. Uh, uh, and then beyond that, um, um, I think if we're going to just say three people, it'd be uh, you know f again it, that caught me going, and it was uh, Bill Link first of all uh, yeah, when I first went in af after practice, starting practice, but uh, and then uh, um, uh, after that was Gavin and. And then Bill, uh, and, and then uh, I'm sorry, uh, that that guy over here, uh, then uh, uh, Jim uh, Mazo, and he who has just been so uh, supportive of so many ways, and the three of them have been support for supporters, supporters, and uh, and uh, I couldn't have done any of this with uh, that without them. And the, th and the other one I have to uh, ex uh, ex uh, include is the guy who is kind of uh, the, uh, the author versus Felix uh, that I've done from starting my first year in college, which was is Carmen Polifito. Uh, we're very different people, but <laughs> to put it mildly, but, but it was a good, it's been a wonderful combination over the years, and we've kind of come and gone as far as uh, how much we're doing, but uh, we really, uh, uh, these people have made, made it possible, and, uh, one of, and, and that's why I had a hard time thinking about uh, things about me, because to me it's always about, Teamwork and doing uh, you don't get any of this uh, without a lot of people working together uh, and it's a real uh, honor to really acknowledge them and everybody else who I can't talk to about together but you know the, that's what, that's what makes it all happen it's it's it's, it's teamwork. Let's kind of sum up with uh, one more last question. And just like you have looked into the future many times in terms of your advice that, uh, that you've given and work that you've done, there are a lot of uh, young, very bright, energetic ophthalmologists who are being trained now. And my question would be, what advice would you give them as to how, if they have such, a, in, uh, such an aspiration, to become the next Roger Steiner. What is it that they need to do? Yeah, well, if they try to be the next Roger Steiner, I'd say stop, <laughs> <laughs> go, go back. <laughs> um, but uh, what, what people really need to do, and, and I think the good people figure it out pretty quickly, is, you, is, is you, not one person, but you have to pick up pieces and incorporate them into your own personality and and then that's where you will be a, a true uh, innovator and 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 uh, the in your own way in your own way and uh, that's that's what I think people need to, to do is just pick up the little pieces uh, and uh, and uh, you know, I, I I mentioned a few that I've already uh, mentioned earlier, but and there are millions more that I could do uh, it, to make this uh, uh, complete. But I just say that uh, 
I hope everybody, uh, in the, especially the young uh, residents and, and the fellows and the, uh, are in practice, to uh, be your own person and just l get the get the best of the best of all the people that you integrate with. Well, Roger, it's uh, it's been one of my great honors to sit and chat with you here in front of all of your friends and admirers. So once again, congratulations on this uh, tremendous award. I'm uh, so happy for you in April. Thank you.